If the wall is breached, Helm's Deep will fall. Even if it is breached, it would take a number beyond reckoning. Thousands to storm the keep. Tens of thousands. But my lord, there is no such force. <laughs> What's up my fellow YouTube gamers, today I'm going to be talking about my Mirror Arrow of Bombarding Clones Guardian on the Hardcore League. This character turned out to be an absolute well-rounded beast, I should say, through the decisions that I've made for it. Uh, there's a million different variants that you can play this character. For me specifically, I wanted a character that I can try Ubers on Hardcore without having ever done them previously, outside of a cheeky kill and a gauntlet one time. Uh, so I didn't really care too much about speed, but I will be talking about variants in which you can be very, very quick uh, with this one. I did care a lot about tankiness, and I cared about having a lot of damage. Of course, everybody wants a lot of damage, and honestly, as far as hardcore builds go, and even for, I think, some of you softcore enjoyers out there, this character does insane amounts of damage. Uh, currently, with the setup that I have, again, on hardcore trades, so... Uh, the itemization is quite limited. I don't have access to a lot of the things that softcore players do just because not a lot of people play hardcore. So I couldn't quite get my gear to a point where I was fully comfortable with it. And I had to unfortunately make some decisions that ended up messing me up in the long run. But overall, it is doing about kind of hard to judge about 30 to 40 million DPS, which has been more than enough. For me, especially considering that it is a pretty heavily minion-oriented build. If you are more interested in a more softcore version, I highly recommend that you check out some of Previ's characters. Uh, he's been experimenting a lot with different Bauma builds in the past, and his builds are very high DPS. But like I mentioned for this one, I wanted more of something that is well-rounded and really never dies. And through access to hardcore trade league we're able to do that so for instance if you're put off by the limited movement speed that i have on this character due to the usage of replica stmp just know that for this build and if you were to play previous builds uh it's completely replaceable it is just something that i decided for because i wanted a character that was essentially most optimal for the thing that i wanted to do but it's not particularly complicated to get rid of it get a quick silver flask you always have onslaught we run a haste right if you want to move around quickly you will be absolutely able to do so but because i am using specters i am using an animate guardian i wanted a lot of utility for my blink arrow so we're running feeding frenzy and elemental army our sockets are going to be a little bit uh tricky but if you were to ditch the replica stampede all you got to do is really just remove the elemental army and then uh, possibly the feeding frenzy or you might want to get rid of the mana forge and snaring arrow build and i guess that brings us to one of the more complicated parts of the build if you're looking at the footage this ability is very powerful it shoots from incredibly far away but we do have a lot of buttons to click so we are using our a blink arrow to teleport around we're obviously using our main ability we got to put down desecrates we got to use spirit offering you really want to be using your mirror arrow as quickly as possible off cooldown because it is a fresh meat build therefore anytime you're going to be placing a new clone uh, for me that's a I think a 4.6 second window, those minions will be significantly more powerful. We are casting Elemental Weakness, we have a Summon Sentinel of Radiance, we have a Stone Golem that you might have to recast, although in my case it pretty much never dies. And then we're also using Sniper's Mark. Uh, obviously you also have Flame Dash as well, like any standard build does nowadays and every now and then you're going to be clicking your volhays so there's a lot of buttons to click there's a lot of things to do with this character but if you want to play it kind of lazily you will be able to absolutely do so you can put triggers on your weapon uh, in my case you can use the mana forge on the ensnaring arrow you can have a tr trigger on sniper's mark you can pretty much fit everything like that into the bow when it comes to the sentinel of radiance it is a 46 second duration for me so that's not too big of a problem and then the spirit offering again you cannot you can uh trigger it alongside the desecrate but 
for me it's about a 20 second duration every time i use it so it's really not a problem to self cast as you do have a lot of time between the mirror arrow cooldowns to be able to fit those casts in a very tricky part of this build is the specters that we are using so currently i am using the uh, perfect turtle which is pretty standard for a lot of builds that can run specters currently this gives us five percent pdr and it also gives me determination which allows me to have unbuffed almost 12k armor again with the limited gear that i have we are running the thunderbird this is a creature that uh has a little bit of a problem but for the most part it gives us grace which puts me at 12.4k uh it also applies exposure with its screech that applies a minus 20 percent uh lightning resistance reduction to enemies with a pretty good uptime however that screech is also a big problem for this build so it mutes all of your audio and whenever that happens it becomes a little bit triggering because as you might have noticed from the footage the build does have a little bit of a visual clarity problem uh and so whenever you mute your audio uh yeah that exactly doesn't help and the main reason why i'm talking about the visual clarity and how this creature might be a problem is this naval commander that i'm using and my god it is a super good specter. It gives me 10% fortification. It gives me uh, precision, which gives a lot of crit and it's global crit. So it's very, very strong for minions. However, uh, just about every attack that it's got just destroys my screen. There's the giant wave that hopefully Titan is showing to you guys right now that covers up pretty much the entire screen. There's a giant bombarding attack that just annihilates any visual clarity that you're still struggling for. But the good news is that you can absolutely get rid of them. I think it was a pretty big mistake for me to use it on hardcore. On software, I believe these guys are like a divine that you can buy them for. And if you if it doesn't bother you that he covers up your screen, just use it because it is a very good specter. But on hardcore, they're like 20 divines. And unfortunately, because I am using Death Attunement, I do have an additional specter. Death Attunements allow you to uh, anoint another piece of gear because my Jinx Juju is already using... Uh, the Whispers of Doom, we are using that. And so, yeah, you can get rid of him, and he is very strong, but he does completely uh, annihilate your screen. But like I mentioned, you can replace the Stampedes, you can get rid of the Spectre if you don't want to use him. There are also other options uh, for Spectres, just try to look through different corpses. Uh, some people might want to use the Warlord Spectre, uh, some people might want to use the... Um, the one that buffs up constructs, although I found that the uptime on it isn't very strong. And this being an elemental build, we don't have a lot of physical damage that then translates to more elemental damage. So this is what I'm using, but probably if I were to redo this character and not cry too much about deleting a 20 divine uh, Spectre, I'd probably just get rid of him and anoint Soul of Steel personally. Just so I quickly talk about some of the strengths outside of just the DPS so that I can explain the choices of this being a guardian. Let me mention that for defenses currently, I have 20% fortify. We are a guardian. So I am running Radiant Crusade, which allows me to uh, use the Sentinel that receives 20% of damage otherwise dealt to us to him. So that's essentially 20% mitigation. I'm running the Turtle for 5% PDR. Currently, I have four endurance charges, which gives me a tremendous amount of defense. We can run defensive curses if you want to. I opted to not because we are just that strong with capped suppression. Uh, spells are pretty much never a problem. And through being a guardian again, I will mention that we have Bastion of Hope with glancing blows and depending on the sort of charms that you're going to be using on the build you can cap out your block and your spell block uh, for me right now i believe that it is uh, somewhere close to cap but not not quite there as uh, itemizing on hardcore has been pretty difficult on, so on top of that also with those specters uh, we are using a jinx juju so that's another 10 percent damage 
uh, that uh, we are not taking instead our specters are taking and I do have 12% unbuffed or 12k unbuffed armor and 12.4k unbuffed evasion on top of all of that we are using uh, jewels that allow our minions to taunt enemies which means that pretty much we're always taunting because whenever I use my uh, mirror arrow those mirror arrows individually attack very very frequently and each time the rain of arrows hits an enemy it hits depending on your setup because sometimes you're going to be using minion damage sometimes you're going to be using conch effect you might want to be using the uh ascendance uh, the mastery for increased area of effect but if you don't have the mastery and if you are using conch effect i find that approximately every time they attack they're going to be hitting about three to four times sometimes they hit five times it really depends on also the size of the enemy uh, so if you're looking at pob numbers maybe you're going to be noticing that uh, they don't quite match up with what i'm saying that the damage is in reality and that what you're seeing on the footage on top of that i'm using another jewel that allows my minions to blind uh, and through that our evasion becomes even more powerful because a lot of people tend to disregard blind but blind is still very very powerful granted you do need a uh, large amount of evasion but the more evasion you have it's essentially a multiplier for that and on top of all of those previously mentioned defenses i am using immutable force so that we pretty much never get stunned and on top of it i'm using blood notch which allows me to have a very powerful defensive interaction for our uh, already very strong character Alongside the previously mentioned Jinx Juju, I am also using a helmet with physical damage taken uh, as fire and the uh, on both the implicit and the explicit. I am using also a chest piece with 8% additional physical damage reduction and with the Gravicious Craft for another additional 12%. You can pair this up with increased uh, max resistances, but honestly, I found that I'm just so tanky that I'm pretty much never going to be using it. Uh, I guess I didn't quite explain the 20% fortify. What 10% comes from the naval commander and another 10% comes from my animate guardian uh, using a kingmaker. Anime Guardian is an incredibly powerful addition to this build and there's a million different ways of doing it so I'll explain the way that I'm doing it and maybe some of the choices that you might want to be making on your character depending on the sort of budget that you have access to uh, or the sort of progression that you've got on your character. So initially I was using Leercast for my helmet, however I did end up switching out to a Crown of the Tyrant. These are super expensive on Hardcore, but I'm pretty sure that on Softcore they're very, very cheap. I was using a Red Socket for the additional fire damage, and I think this is by far the strongest thing that you can use for damage. I haven't had any survivability problems. Uh, you can, I'm not even using an Empower on my anime guardian which you can totally fit into the build for your body armors it is pretty complicated i highly recommend that you go to the uh, pwe wiki to look at all the different options uh, but i am using a Groot goose pelt this essentially just gives me a 10 percent a flat life regeneration rate if you're doing content that might wanna that might one shot your guardian somehow although not a whole lot of those things exist in the game again especially if you are using the empower uh, I could recommend for you to use a doppelganger's guys. Uh, this does give you the regeneration as well, but it's only for one second if your guy has been hit frequent uh, recently, which means that it doesn't work as well against degens, but it does give you another 40% less physical and chaos damage taken while sane, which your guardian is always going to be. Another good option would be guard of the ephemeral. This allows you to never have your action speed reduced ever, so you cannot get frozen, although we are using uh, purity of elements. It's a very important aspect of our build because it gives those immunities to our minions as well. Uh, but if you are not using the boots, you can still get slowed and blah, blah, blah. So uh, it's definitely a good option. And then also nearby enemies cannot deal critical strikes, which is incredible for your character's survivability. But, uh, you know, you do miss out on the 10% regeneration. So if your guardian's ever in trouble, 
this might make all the difference. I think for hardcore, Garb of Ephemeral is probably your best bet because the Kingmaker and the Tyrant Crown is uh, so expensive. But again, because I'm not doing too much difficult content and so you can always take your Guardian off if you're going to be doing Ubers and you feel like it might get sketchy, then yeah, I am using the Groot Cools Pelt. For gloves, um, you can use gloves that have just increased effect of non-damaging ailments, which will then boost up your boots, which I guess I'll talk about really quickly. I think the best option is Legacy of Fury. This allows you at 50% increased effect of Scorch to apply a 17% Scorch to any, and any enemy in a pretty decent uh, area, which then... Uh, well, this is a... 15% but then if you use gloves that have 20% increased effect you can use unique ones or you can use rolled ones it'll put it at 17. Um, another good option for gloves I guess would be corrupting blood gloves if you find your guardian to be losing HP to corrupting blood or maybe if you're doing awakener that's something that you can incorporate into your build. Uh, both types of gloves are very very cheap so you can just buy a pair and switch them out whenever you're running a bunch of guard, a bunch of awakeners. If you don't want to de-equip your guardian, it's definitely an option. And for your weapon, I think initially dying breath is always a good call. It's just a super cheap weapon and boosts up the amount of damage that we deal uh, to enemies. Or your endgame weapon, which again very cheap on softcore, very expensive on hardcore. A kingmaker. Kingmaker is just insane. It gives us item rarity it gives us calling strike on everything this is an aura it gives us critical strike multiplier 50 percent which is just insane because crit multi is very powerful for this build and it also gives us the uh 10 fortification stacks that obviously as mentioned previously works in tangent or together with our specter for the ascendancies and the leveling it has been a very uh, pleasant process i gotta say obviously we are a guardian so leveling is super duper easy with summon sentinel of radiance but it's not like you even need this ability at all uh, because this skill mirror arrow of bombarding clones or if you even want to use it in the early game the blink arrow it's very easy to take this ability vendor it with an alteration and it'll swap to the other version of it. So if you're ever wanting to test out the Blink Arrow of Bombarding Clones, it's just incredible from the get-go. I was using uh, just a Tabula Rasa, a Cool Rain, and uh, this skill, and alongside Unwavering Crusade, I was able to get to Tier 16 maps and destroy Tier 16 bosses very, very easily all the way through. So pretty much the second you hit level 10, you can start using it. And not only do I guarantee that it's the most powerful summon you will ever use for leveling ever, it's probably going to be one of the most powerful leveling builds that you've ever experienced uh, in all of Path of Exile because... The only thing that I can think of that really compares were those old Poets Pen builds, but uh, yeah, those are not even as fast as they used to be anymore. So yeah, you do go Radiant Crusade, you get Unwavering Crusade for the super strong auras, you, then you can go Bastion of Hope or Time of Need, it really doesn't matter whichever one you uh, prefer. For the Primal Ascendancy, I don't even know, Wildwood Ascendancy, that's what it is. I would recommend that you go with the one that gives you movement speed initially. It does help out a lot. Eventually, we're going to be getting a lot of sockets and we'll be switching to the Primalist, the, the um, socket one. This is just really good because the other ones don't really offer anything for our character. Currently, the charms that I'm using are nearby enemies are chilled. We do chill a lot, but this is just something that is very, very, very strong. It also, if you were to go for a six link setup, you might want to consider hypothermia. So you might want to be like always chilling regardless of whatever is happening. We do a decent amount of cold damage through our triple elemental bow, but uh, it's still really good to have. The 56 increase uh, charge duration is very, very important because of the gain and endurance charge every 15 seconds on your chest piece. You can lower the amount that you get or the amount of time that it takes for you to get a singular charge by using a higher level thing. But if you were to use a lower level Eldritch currency like me and have the 15 seconds, just keep in mind that you have to have a minimum increased charge duration of 51%. Uh, so make sure that you pay attention to that. 
Uh, while there are at least five nearby enemies, you and nearby allies have Onslaught. I don't benefit from the movement speed because of the use of Replica Stampede, but this is what would give you the permanent movement speed on the six link version as your super strong attack speed is very powerful for this build one of the biggest things about this character in particular is also that we use uh, haste and initially i was using generosity but honestly i found that it does give me quite a lot of damage but overall it just felt a lot better to get that cast speed and the attack speed for my character so uh getting a little bit of that through the use of this is just super good because we pretty much always have uh five minions around we're always teleporting them with convocation which also always procs our bastion of hope and we're always attacking which also procs the other uh part of bastion of hope so yeah not really uh, something that should ever be off. The other thing that I have is the if you've attacked recently, your nearby allies have 8% chance to block attack damage. Uh, this would be better if it was spell damage, in my opinion, for myself. But again, limited hardcore trade, but something for you to consider. And then I'm using a old uh, charge duration and spell suppress. Uh, you don't really need to do this at all because of the way that my gear is. It just works out for to cap me out on spell suppression. But obviously, I don't need the charge duration. So you could get something that would be a lot more useful. Uh, possibly something with more block or... Uh, honestly, just look through the modifiers because there's so many. And none of them are too impactful, but they just might end up making a difference in your character. Maybe it's some flat defenses that you could be getting. Maybe it's... Uh, something that like the juggernaut node that which allows you to uh, take a portion of your armor and apply it to spells honestly you just have to kind of figure out for yourself what your character is going to be in need for of and then when it comes to le the leveling uh like i mentioned it was super straightforward however i do recommend that you do a couple things first of all this is our pathing in the late game because it's just not worth it due to the five percent life node but if you need more intelligence you might want to be doing this in the end game but for the early game you exit through here you go to the scion as quickly as possible and you charge all the way over to avatar of the hunt and the reason for this is the blink hour and mirror hour have 100 percent increased cooldown recovery rate this is something that's going to be super powerful for you early and late game it's pretty much mandatory in the build do keep in mind that if you want to uh, I am using a Watcher's Eye here, which gives me 50% increased cooldown recovery rate of movement skills while affected by haste. This is a really big deal. The cooldown recovery is very important, which is also a little bit unfortunate on the boots because we can't get the implicit for them. But what you could also do here is move this Watcher's Eye to somewhere else and use a um, Timeless Jewel. Um, I personally recommend probably something like Shabakwa. And I'll be talking a little bit more about that in the gearing section because I've made some mistakes, I think, with the gear that you can probably avoid on your character and make it even more powerful. But it doesn't change what the mastery is, so you can still use that. And honestly, after that point, when you've already uh, reached this, you can do whatever. Uh, Grave Pact is really good. Enduring Bond is really good. Getting the duration is really good. The duration is very important because it extends the duration of our fresh meat. And uh, then you just pick up whatever whatever you really feel like. Going for more crit is always good, but keep in mind that, uh, you know, defenses will take you a long way. When it comes to the items, you have a million different options, honestly. I will be highlighting some of the mistakes that I've made. And the very first one is the Spine Bow. You most definitely don't want to be using this. Unfortunately, again, through Hardcore, this was the only one that I could get with a Fracture Tier 1 mod but I very heavily uh, regret it. You want something that has a lower dexterity requirement, but preferably something that does have the implicit craft, and then you're just crafting it with essences for the fire and cold damage. Uh, at that point, you can do whatever you want, honestly, with the suffixes, because you can continuously reroll it with uh, cannot change prefixes and get really good mods. I ended up settling on something that was... Uh, pretty much the worst thing that you can possibly get, which is uh, getting a cannot change prefixes using a veiled chaos orb, and that allowed me to get 15% increased attack speed. However, you can get this increased attack speed with uh, attributes, dexterity, and int, which would help out a lot. And maybe at some point I'm going to be rerolling it, but honestly, I'm just kind of uh, done with the build because I've been playing it for a very long time anyway. 
Uh, but you want, might want to get the attack speed or you might want to get the uh, critical chance, which would be better than the craft that I have here. I ended up slamming the increased projectile speed, which was kind of lucky, but that's one of the things that I thought is going to make a big difference for this build, the projectile speed on both the bow and the quiver. But honestly, it hasn't. I don't know. It just doesn't feel like it's particularly impactful for Blink Arrow and it doesn't feel like it's doing much for bombarding clones either so it doesn't seem to work quite like rain of arrows but yeah that's just something to keep in mind you absolutely do not need this and i would go for a damaging stat as much as possible another option that you can get is the chance to gain a frenzy charge on hit on your quiver which is something that i don't have it also allows you to get global critical strike chance this is the quiver that i ended up with generally you might want to be focusing on just increased damage with bow skills as it does apply your minions do use your bow and your quiver uh, so you might want to get the damage you want to get the increased elemental damage i also have the increased elemental damage if you've dealt a critical strike recently which again also does apply as long as they crit it's not me critting it's them critting and then just life uh, anything on the suffix, uh, obviously double damage would be really good here, double damage would be really good here. Uh, the previously mentioned Frenzy Charge, uh, you definitely want to have Critical Strike Multiplier because it's very, very strong. Uh, a Resist, if you need it, in my case I did, so that's what I'm using. And then the Implicit should most likely be uh, either Attack Speed or Elemental Damage. On the suffix also you can get Attack Speed as well, so something to keep in mind as those values are pretty high. For the helmet, suppression and life, and this is a theme that you're going to be seeing a lot. You want to leave an open prefix for the Corel craft as well. I ended up putting way too much money into this helmet, but ended up hitting in the in the end. If you guys want to see the unluckiness that it was to roll this thing, uh, check out the highlight videos on my YouTube channel because uh, it was quite the journey. Gloves, resistances, suppression, life. Implicits kind of speak for themselves. Want to have an open prefix for the uh, minion craft. The chest piece, pretty much same idea. You do want to get the additional physical damage reduction. You can either accomplish this by repeatedly smashing this with essences. You can uh, craft it by using the physical reforge and that might get you a little bit of luck but it can roll reflect on the implicit which can be pretty frustrating this is just something that you're gonna have to experiment with it's not too difficult to roll a chest piece like this although in the end uh after a lot of turmoil i did end up getting lucky and getting a lot of hp and i kind of settled on the bottom roll uh spell damage the previously mentioned endurance charges, in my opinion, are very, very important. The four endurance charges are just a lot of survivability, uh, a lot of uh, resistances as well. And then the other implicit honestly just doesn't matter. The 1% less damage taken is just what I settled for. You can get this rolled better or you can go for one of the other modifiers, but do keep in mind that uh, the auras that you get from the specters and the auras that you get from Unwavering Crusade do not count as your auras so you cannot scale them through effect so the implicits on the chest piece aren't gonna do a whole lot for you uh for the boots i am using the stampedes but you if you were to go for the six link setup uh it would pretty much be the same thing as gloves but with movement speed another really important thing is like i mentioned previously i am using a watcher's eye for uh cooldown recovery rate of movement skills uh, this is something that you can get on an implicit on boots and it will help out a lot It really does make the character move a lot a lot more fluently because it is a little bit weird initially Because you have so little movement speed On this character that without the watcher's eye I did feel like my flame dash and my blink arrow were on cooldown a little bit too uh, frequently personally and now let's get into, I guess, the difficult gear. Outside of the Jinx Juju, which is one of my favorite amulets in the entire game, this one is pretty much set in stone. I really wouldn't ever even consider using anything else because it's just turbo powerful. But yeah, the, the difficult gear. So I ended up going with double bone rings. And I gotta say, I think this was a mistake. Um, I didn't cap out my chaos resistance, which is a big problem. And it would prevent me from using Shabakwa down here, like I talked about before. I would use Amethyst Rings, honestly, even Vermilions. I definitely don't think that this build needs as much damage as I ended up getting on it. So if you really 
want to still have the minion damage i think you can crusader slam on an amethyst ring and that can give you the increased minion damage the minion attack and cast speed it's just not necessary so if you want to make gearing for yourself a lot easier i do heavily recommend you utilize uh, these rings uh yeah, if you want to do more damage, use these rings. If you don't care about damage damn much, you feel like you've got enough, use Amethyst rings. Uh, you might notice that I have a non-channeling skills. Uh, have minus 7 to total mana cost. Even on a 4 link, this is pretty much mandatory in my opinion. I am also using the Mastery for skills cost life instead of 30% uh, mana cost. I think that this is super useful, but with the start looking this way, you don't necessarily need it but sometimes i did find myself to have not quite enough mana so i ended up using it i do think that maybe if you skip this you might want to be picking up like mana flows or something or if you're using the six link setup i do think that it's going to be ma like mandatory and then you might want to use mana flows or maybe you want to use dynamo that's totally up to you the mastery here is also really good if you want to switch up something for uh your auras for instance if you want to fit in i know that gucci is playing this build as well and he fit in aspect of the crab on his build by using amethyst strings with one of the mana masteries and that allows you to get 12 percent increased mana reservation of efficiency and then he passed through here and that allowed him to have aspect of the crab which is totally a super duper legit option so yeah that's just going to depend on the rest of your gear what you want to do with your rings and then finally you can see that i am using a stygian vice but this is almost entirely through laziness i mean let's be honest uh again trading is just very limited on hardcore i would highly recommend that you use the darkness and throne i even have one that's sitting here with 100 percent increased effect but i'm not going to be using it because it requires me to trade for more jewels and because i feel like my damage is really good i ended up going with this thing if you don't want to use the Darkness and Throne, then get Jewels and get more damage. Uh, you might want to consider using a Elder or a Hunter Belt for uh, more percent increased uh, life. And otherwise, yeah, you're just getting the suffixes to fit your resistances. Um, probably something I should fix, but I'm just... I just, I, I just can't be. I, I just can't do it anymore because I'm pretty much going to be rerolling this character into SSF anyway any moment now so yeah uh for the flasks i'm using a regeneration quartz i'm using a armadillo granite flask everything's obviously got the flagellant mod it is a little bit weird because we do have so much evasion that it's a little bit counterintuitive but it still works with spells so i would recommend it then we've got the uh, jade flask and then obviously a taste of hate our guys don't benefit from the taste of hate whatsoever when it comes to the damage but the physical damage from hits taken as cold damage is just that good defensively that i would really never give it up if you do want to use a quicksilver and you're not using the replica stampedes uh yeah just ditch the jade flask in my opinion i think the taste of hate pretty much always stays maybe for boss fights you want to be switching out the quartz but if you're somebody that's bossing on hardcore you know that your flasks are always going to look a lot differently anyway so that's just something that you guys are going to have to min max for yourself i will be playing a lot of different versions of this build uh, i think this skill is just busted it is a serious contender in my eyes for uh, the gauntlet event and that's what i'm going to be testing next most likely some champion impale version of this build without the uh, use of as many auras without the use of specters in an ssf hardcore environment so if that's something that interests you and if you want to watch it make sure to tune into the stream and uh, there's probably going to be more videos about that on the youtube channel coming up in the future so yeah make sure to subscribe to the youtube check out the twitch channel and i hope to see you guys in the next video see you guys later bye